Hi there, and welcome to this video where we'll be going through 10 expert tips on how to succeed in the anger. Tip number one is prepare. There are loads of practice past papers out there for you to use, and you should be trying out as many as possible to prepare for the exam. Past papers are going to help you get to grips with the style of question in the exam, and the speed of answering and exam technique you'll need to do as well as you can. Oxbridge Mind has a bank of past papers and I'll put the link in the description below so you can check those out and use them as part of your preparation. Tip number two is understand the syllabus. There's a standardised syllabus for the anger and it's possible you will have covered a lot of it in your maths and physics qualifications but you should still check to make sure you're happy with every topic that can come up. And just because you've covered something before, don't assume you'll be fine answering it when it comes to the anger. Make sure you have a real think about whether you need to recap any of these topics and then do any revision that is required. You need to ensure that any gaps in your knowledge are filled before you sit the exam. So if there's a topic that you've seen before in your A-levels but you're not quite happy with it, revise that. And if you have a look and there's a topic you've just not covered yet, that's something you need to go away and learn about yourself. Tip number three is work consistently. Consistent preparation is what is going to separate out the top students in this exam. Remember, everyone who sits this exam is applying to study engineering at Cambridge. So everyone who sits at this exam is going to be very, very good at physics and at maths. So being good at physics and maths is not sufficient to do well in this exam. You need to do consistent practice of past papers under time conditions so you can also build the exam technique and skills needed to be as efficient as possible in the exam, to answer as many questions as quickly and as accurately as possible, and that's, wanna get you, that's what's going to get you those high scores. Starting early and doing consistent work is also going to be helpful if you have other commitments during the Cambridge admissions period. So for example, if you're doing your A-levels, if you start your anger preparation early and work consistently, you're going to avoid burning out during this important time. You don't want to cram it all into a short period of time, especially when you've got other commitments like working hard on your A-levels or potentially applications to other universities. Tip number four is replicate exam conditions when you're doing your past papers. Part of the challenge of this exam is the time constraints that are going to be placed on you. In section one, you've only got a minute and a half per question, and in section two, you've only got three minutes per question. So therefore, it's important to get used to answering under this kind of pressure. If you were given infinite time, it's quite likely you'd be able to get most of the questions right. The challenge here is that you don't have infinite time and you need to make sure that you are fast, accurate and efficient when you're sitting this paper. A way to practice that is to replicate those exam conditions when you're doing your past papers. Another thing to remember is that in the exam you will not have a calculator, so you need to make sure when you're practicing anger past papers you do not use a calculator, however tempting it might be. Tip number five is to spot patterns in those past papers. You should be looking at the questions in your past papers and thinking about what kind of similarities there are year and year. Do certain things come up every year? Are there certain shortcuts that can help you get to the answer on specific types of questions? Spotting these sorts of patterns are going to really help you in the final exam as you'll have the most efficient strategy possible to answer questions correctly. Tip number six is to formalize a question strategy. Now, there are a few key concepts at the heart of physics at this level. So for example, these are things like force balances and energy conservation. There's always going to be a variety of questions testing these topics. So it will really help if you can come up with some strategies to answer this sort of thing before you get into the exam. You want to practice setting up equations for things like this and the speed of interpreting or drawing any graphs that you might need to help you answer these questions. If you can build frameworks that can be applied to a range of common questions, you'll be more efficient in the exam and stand the best chance of getting every question answered correctly. Tip number seven is to learn important equations by heart. You're going to need to know some equations for this exam and you need to be able to recall those quickly and accurately during the test. You want to be able to train yourself in fast recall of these and a good way to do it is to use a spaced repetition software this will help you remember those equations as you'll be practicing over time recalling them quickly. An example of the software you can use for this is Anki, but any spaced repetition software will do. Tip number eight is to practice your written mathematics. 
So remember in this exam you are not going to have a calculator and therefore any written maths you are doing needs to be fast and accurate. You might have got used to using a calculator if you're doing something like A-level maths where those are allowed, so don't just assume that your written math skills are still up to scratch. You need to work on them and the best way to do this is simply to practice. Doing practice past papers and writing down your workings out is going to be what will help you achieve a level of this. Doing past papers and writing down your working out is what's going to help you achieve the required level of written math skills to succeed in this test. When you're practicing this skill, you really want to be focusing on speed and accuracy, as you're going to have to work things out quite quickly in the real thing and you want to avoid mistakes wherever possible. Tip number nine is challenge yourself. While you're preparing for the anger, you're not just limited to those anger pass papers, although they are very important. There are other resources you can use to hone your maths and physics problem solving ability. For example, Isaac Physics tests a range of physics questions across academic abilities. You can also have a look at questions from the Maths Olympiad or the Physics Olympiad, as this is more high level maths and physics problem solving, which is the kind of thing you'll be doing in the anger. I'll link all those resources in the description for you to have a look at. You might also want to read ahead into some university level maths or physics to get further content. You might also want to read ahead into university level maths or physics to get further context for the kinds of physics and maths you'll have to do in the exam. Though remember they are not at this level, it's up to you if you want to challenge yourself by doing that. And tip number 10 is remember to do some super curricular activities. The application process isn't just going to be about anger preparation, it's one piece of the puzzle. You also need to show the admissions tutors at Cambridge that you are a passionate student of engineering. And the way to do this is through supercurricular activities. So what these are, are things to do with your subject that extend beyond the kind of things you'll cover in the classroom. So for example, in your A-level maths or A-level physics lessons. Doing supercurricular activities, which could be setting yourself your own projects, reading about engineering, looking at podcasts, anything like that, it'll also help you with your anger preparation because you'll be exposing yourself to this kind of higher level thinking about maths and physics that is part of engineering. So make sure you do those supercurricular activities, not just to have something to talk about in your personal statement and potentially an interview, but also to help you develop those kinds of skills that are going to help you in the anger. If you're looking for somewhere to start, the engineering department at Cambridge provide a list of university pre-reading and I'll link that in the description so you can have a look. So that's our 10 top tips on how to succeed in the anger. Hopefully now you're feeling like you will be able to do your best in this exam. If you're looking for more information about the anger, we've got more videos on the Oxbridge Minds channel, so check those out as well. Thank you for watching.